You're listening to the Options Insider Radio Network. For more quality options programs, visit www.theoptionsinsider.com or search for Options Insider Radio Network in your podcast provider of choice. Listeners can also access all of our programming through our mobile app, available in iTunes and on Google Play. Don't forget to follow along with your favorite programs and submit your own questions for the hosts at twitter.com slash options, facebook.com slash the options insider, or via questions at the options insider.com. And now it's time for the show that breaks down the options market from unusual activity alerts to market analysis, strategy overviews, listener questions, and much more. If it involves puts and calls, then our all-star panel will break it down. It's time to hit the option block with your host, Mark Longo from the Options Insider Media Group and co-hosts Uncle Mike Tussaud from RCM Asset Management, Andrew the Rock Lobster Joe Venazzi from OptionPit.com, and Mark the Greasy Meatball Sebastian from OptionPit.com. And now, get ready to hit the Option Block. All right, everybody. Welcome back to that rockinest of shows here on the old Options Insider Radio Network. Yes, it's time for the Option Block. My name is Mark Longo from theoptionsinsider.com, as well as, of course, from the ever-exciting Options Insider Radio Network. If I sound like usual, it's because I'm back in the normal Options Insider studios here in sunny and quite warm Chicago, Illinois, back from the southern studios, but still rocking and rolling here on the old network. And of course, as always, you can find all of our goodness wherever you find your favorite podcasts, or your iTunes, your Stitchers, your TuneIn, your Amazons, all that fun stuff. Also via our mobile app. I know if some guys, sometimes you want to just mainline our stuff directly. You don't want to mess with the other crazy podcatchers, other shows. I'm down with that. Go ahead. Go grab our app and download, stream, make your playlists, ask questions, all that fun stuff till your heart's content. Of course, you can always join us live every Monday and Thursday. Not this Monday, of course. It was a holiday, but we're back here on Thursday. It is July 6th for all of you playing along on the old home game and a lot of fun stuff coming to you and helping me do just that. I am joined by, let's go in order of distance. Let's go all the way out to the scenic coast of Maine, where we are joined once again by the Rock Lobster himself, Mr. Andrew Giovinazzi from OptionPit.com. Mr. G, welcome back to the program, sir. I'm just glad I'm not muted. I, I, like, I just take it as it comes now these days with the show. I'm just happy being not <laughs> muted. You're happy to be able to be heard. Everything else is just gravy for you, sir. It's a, it is a, it, all I can say is every day is a gravy day at OptionPit, where I get to hang out in my office and talk to people about trading all day long. You can't get much better than that. There you go. Happy times over there in the land of the pit. And also joining us a little bit closer to home near the infamous Skippy's Euros and Lemonade. Good old Uncle Mike Tussaud from RCM Wealth Advisors. Uncle Mike, welcome back to the show to you as well. Hey, happy to be here. And you know what? God bless America. Because where else in the world can you go into uh an, an evening, a Tuesday evening on the 4th of July and uh, hang out with your family and watch a bunch of loud bombs being blasted throughout the sky and have everybody cheer. There you go. <laughs> Happiness ensues across the board. All right. With the team assembled, let's dive right on into the trading block. It's time to break down the latest topics, trades, and trends in the world of options. It's time for the trading block. All right, everybody, welcome to the trading block. Like the name implies, this is indeed the portion of the program where we break down what was moving, shaking, rocking, and rolling in today's market activity. And of course, it would help if my platform was up and running. For some reason, it's uh, dragging along a little bit behind. But we had an interesting day. We are flirting with some, shall we say, higher levels than we were in the past. You know, there was all this hand-wringing a week or two ago in the broad financial media. Oh, wither, wither the VIX, wither the volatility. Where can I go to get myself some vol? And then all of a sudden it came, came back a bit a little bit. We saw trade in over the 12 handle with the VIX cash 
Closing today at 1285. So getting up there. Let's see how high it got intraday here. My platform will play along. There we go. 13.05, the high on ye old VIX cash. All of us were fading it pretty hard yet again in the ball view. So once again, not looking too good for any of us there on, uh, on the old screens. We'll see. We got another day. You never know what could happen. We could plunge. A good uh, percent of a percent, a good 30-odd percent in the old mixed cash, and I'll be looking good. But we'll see. Uh, that said, Mr. Mr. Meatball, we'll, we'll start with you. Actually, not Mr. Meatball, Mr. Rock Lobster, the partner, the compatriot to one Mr. Meatball. Uh, what caught your eye in this week of a little bit more ball, a little bit more ball on the screen this week? I, I prefer when you say uh, my yin to his yang. Do you say that, actually? Do you say that? I have been known to say that on occasion. <laughs> Anyway, the, I think um, I think what's interesting. Let's see. Did they crush VIX here into the close? Because I thought we were seeing a slightly higher number, like two seconds ago. Um, I, you know, you know what? I I think this is a really weird. Um, this is a weird. I, I'm just gonna say. Um, this sounds like this whole North Korea thing has got people a little bit whacked out. I gotta say. Um, I don't see many other yeah, because we closed yeah, we closed it near the top for VIX today, twelve and a half. Uh very, very near the top of the range. Um, did we get higher than that today? I'm trying to look at my tick chart here on this. Um we did trade thirteen and then they sold it off again. The yeah, thirteen point oh five according to my admittedly slow platform today, but it does it is showing me thirteen oh five on the right, high. Right. It did I know it I know it just broke through that because we were just talking about trying to find the best risk reward ways to kind of sell uh, the Monday options uh, through, uh, through a fly in our gold class for a little bit. Um, I, they look like some interesting things to do. Um, we probably will know tomorrow how good they are um, for if you for an aggressive, I would say, in a really aggressive trade. But you know, a one percent move and you have twelve and a half VIX. Totally fair. Totally reasonable. Um, totally understandable. Uh, and if we have another day like this, we'll probably be at 14 and a half or 15 tomorrow. Um, cause right now, you know, we're kept flirting with those all times highs. Nothing is, you know, that problem we've had before, you know, I think Tucson said, you know, okay, we're up here, we're up here. We need a reason to break out. We need a reason to break out and just, you know, you're not getting that, you know, you're not getting that macro stuff. You're not getting Congress still quaint, you know, they slunk away without doing anything with healthcare, uh, the tax thing, I don't know what the hell those guys do all day, to be honest, because um, <laughs> it doesn't look like they get much done. Uh, I, maybe that's a good thing. Uh, but And then you have some saber rattling, um, and it looks like a little dollar weakness, too, which probably isn't, uh, which isn't really helping things. So, you know, that's enough of a brew for the market to sell off pretty easily. Um, but I would say nothing looks super ugly. Yet it's just we're the VIX is moving because we're moving, and you know once you talk about crazy ballistic missiles and stuff, vol goes up and the market sells off. So I, but I think with this type of move, unless you know there's some sort of, you know, let's just call it some sort of diplomatic switch tomorrow, we probably you know kind of stay a little weak, and uh, we'll see how that goes into the weekend. Um, cause if there's no resolution over the weekend, you never, how everybody gets a little bit jittery, like, okay, you have a little funk on Thursday. You don't really have a re resolution on Friday. You don't really get that, that rally quite yet. So, um, I, I think that's, I think that's a little part of it. Go figure nukes equals VIX juice. So what a, what a, what a strange equation. Who could have figured that in a million years? Get a little saber rattling over there on the nuclear end of the equation. And all of a sudden you got some VIX. So that's all it took. Takes a little nuclear action. People were saying, what's it going to take? What's going to finally make VIX move? All we needed were some, uh, some nukes in the equation. And lo and behold, there goes the vol. All right, Mr. Uncle Mike, same question for you. Lots been cooking all over the place. What's been catching your eye so far? in today's and indeed we never show on monday so this week's activity is fair game as well sir yeah that'd be a good show title then uh, nuclear war equals higher vix i know Maybe. i hate i even hate that phrase <laughs> it freaks me out a little bit. <laughs> well if, if we're gonna I go grew down up in the we, 80s we, so. you're in maine so i doubt you'd be a very big target no that's true so that's true. but 
<laughs> but no, nonetheless. Yeah, the uh, options inside our studios, we wiped off the map. But the rock lobster in his lobster cages, I think, I think you'd be doing all right. You may have some extra legs on those lobsters up there, but other than that, you'll be good. <laughs> there you go. Well, not this year. <laughs> There you go. There you go. So no, I was looking in the, in the market so far this week. Uh, of course, you know, we're, we're, we're coming down off some all time highs right now. Uh, S and P is down uh, roughly nine tenths of a percent today. So we still didn't even go down a full percentage point today. Uh, we did not close on the lows. We're about two points off the lows of the day in the SPX. Uh, so that's a, for the case for the bulls, it's a pretty good thing. I think we have some relatively strong support here in the near term at the 2400 level. I know we've talked about, uh, that level many times. Uh, so I, right at the close today, I sold a put spread. And so I'll let everyone know how that goes next week. So uh, we just had a little bit of extra potential deltas that we could use. And uh, we took advantage of some funds that were on the sidelines. And uh, I'll let everyone knows how, know how that goes next week, uh, good or bad, uh, or indifferent for that matter. Uh, so with that, we have that. Uh, the other thing that I think is pretty interesting, though, is if we have a lot of fear, if, if uh, fear of nuclear war or fear of uh, uh, nuclear bombs is what's driving down this market, uh, what kind of wouldn't add up along those lines would be the fact that gold and silver were relatively flat today, and they've been coming down a lot recently. Uh, and along with that, uh, oil has gotten just pummeled recently. So um, I guess maybe the way with which to look at it, if you want to do the um, the nuclear war spread combo, uh, if we do get some, some more development uh, with the nukes and we have more fear that you're expecting, uh, what would... Go with in in my mind if you're if you're going that route, uh, I would assume that commodities would go much higher if we ever had uh, some type of a nuclear threat or something that uh, is pretty large and legitimate. Uh, but the reason one of the reasons with which I'm resting easy over the nuclear war right now uh, is the fact that we have a very flat uh, commodity market today. So um, I think that with that being said, we're flat in commodities. Uh, we are in in the bond world. Uh, TLT is also down a dollar on the day, uh, along with the nearly a 1% drop in the markets. Uh, money's going to have to come in somewhere tomorrow. I really believe that, uh, whether it's going to be in bonds, whether it's going to be in commodities, whether it's going to be in the S&P, that part I don't know. But I do believe we're going to get some money coming into the market just because we had so much money coming out of uh, all three of those major categories today. So uh, we'll see what happens with this tomorrow. But uh, there's a lot of... Um, money that's coming out, not just in one area. Uh, so in all honesty on today, uh, I think this is a buying opportunity, quite frankly. Speaking of money coming out, we got to talk about the the big elephant in the room with it. A lot of money has been coming out over the last uh, yesterday and continued even today. Of course, I'm talking about uh, Tesla. They giveth, <laughs> they taketh away, and they're taking it away pretty hard. Of course, uh, we saw a nice downgrade. We'll get to that in a little bit over there. Uh, Tesla taking on the chin yesterday, taking on the chin again today as well, off over 5%, 5.5% actually, roughly, or about 18 or so handles flirting still hasn't broken through the 300 level to the downside so all you wring in your hands still over 300 308 about 30890 or so uh closing the day out here but still uh, fascinating to watch just the ebbs and flows of this name of course goldman coming out uh, and uh downgrading it quite infamously shall we say over their concerns about sales of the model s and the model x and the slowing slowing production of those of course if you believe people who are into analysts and we've we've poo pooed analysts many times here on this show so we don't have to get into it too much but i know people at stock twits and others were really digging up this guy's record and showing this guy has got the worst predictive record uh, of all analysts on the street and everything else and this guy's a hack so a lot of that was being thrown about of course a lot of those probably were tesla bulls so you gotta take that with a grain of salt uh, but still interesting stuff nonetheless kind of a double whammy we also saw the iihs it's the insurance institute for highway safety uh, refusing to give tesla that kind of top five star safety rating that they have with some of the other rate uh, insurance agencies and things like that uh, they dinged them for the headlights and also for only acceptable 
quotes, performance on the small overlap crash test. So not getting a five-star safety award, which they kind of have been using in a lot of their marketing and things over the last couple of years. So that's kind of a bit of a one-two punch, knocking them down. Uh, seeing a lot of volume out there today, about 415,000 contracts. That's over 2X uh, their ADV of about 192,000 right now. We'll get to some funky performance or activity out there, shall we say, in a little bit when we get to the odd block. But before that, uh, Mr. Mr. I almost said meatball again. I keep wanting to get meatball in the brain. Mr. Rock Lobster, I know you were just in town last week. Sorry I missed you. You were in town last week kind of uh, talking to all of your active folks in your option pit community there. And, of course, you're talking to them every day in the pit chat over there. Uh, I imagine all this back and forth and Tesla has got to be drawing their eye, particularly in this era where this week aside, volatility is kind of hard to come, fi- come by. Tesla has been delivering it in spades of late. So what are, your, what are your crazies up to out there in Tesla and what's been catching your eye out there? Tesla, $300 for tomorrow as a possible pin. It's just it's um, it is looking um, very. Let's just say it's looming. I, it was in a, just 350. <laughs> so I was. Looking at the volatility in there, and uh, we were talking. So we were talking about it yesterday, and our clients, I were, I they we were saying, oh, you know, the volatility is forty-five, and I go, yeah, but it moves seven percent yesterday. Um, what's what's uh, what's the volatility on a seven percent move for one day? That's uh, let's see, seven times sixteen would be a um, hundred and what is that? One hundred and twelve. <laughs> <laughs> Seven times sixteen is one hundred twelve, so um, I think so, right? That's two. Yep, one twelve, right? Because um, so you had one hundred and twelve vol move in Tesla yesterday on a three hundred fifty dollars stock, and today you had another five and a half percent move. Um, so what what I would say right now is um, the stock is definitely um, it's still a danger zone. I think the vol is high, and it's. You know, it's hard for anybody to buy 50 vol in a $308 stock, but you got there's some crazy town in there. Um, so, you know, start looking at some of the downside. Uh, downside flies probably are pricing very cheap. Actually, I think they are. So, you know, looking at trades like that because um, for whatever reason, you know, once the bloom comes off the rose on something like this, you know, it's down what 40 bucks in a couple of days. What's another 20? So um, maybe everybody just realizes, wow, they, they got to start selling a lot of cars before they make any money. <laughs> but hey. I love how everyone came to that realization so late. You know, it's been sitting around for a while and <laughs> things soared 100 handles over the past few months. And now, wait a minute, they actually got to move some cars uh, to actually make some of that money back. And all of a sudden, uh, all of a sudden, the beers are out with their claws. Interesting stuff. I know people just have a lot of back and forth out there. I, I, won't even, I mean, the analyst thing has been funny. If you I wanted to read this, just how much vitriol there is piling up on this analyst guy and people linking to his ratings records and how if you follow this guy, you've lost 75 percent over the past year or two or something crazy like that and uh, it's just been kind of funny to watch again we don't take uh, put a lot of stock in analysts here put put our stock in where the actual money is trading in the options market in the straddles and those kind of things that tell us what's going on in the volatility rather than some vague analysts i would love i haven't had a chance to dig into it myself uh, this kind of re- seemingly well-timed downgrade here this this kind of just reeks to me of if i'm sure if i dug into the activity in tesla granted there's a lot of contracts going up so a lot of digging to do but i'm sure if i dug into that i'm sure we probably find some nice, well-timed put uh, put traffic out there. Perhaps, perhaps they're Goldman customers. Perhaps they're customers of other banks who got the got the nod ahead of time. Uh, I know you used to see a lot of this going up on the floor back in the day. I used to as well, Mr. Rock Lobster. These well-timed downgrades and upgrades usually are accompanied by some very well-informed options traffic. Uh, it's going to, nice thing about Tesla. Maybe the good thing for people who are trying to get away with this stuff is that there's so much going on out there. You can easily hide. There's a lot of forest to hide in out there to spot the individual trees. But still, interesting stuff nonetheless. Uh, really quickly before we, unless Uncle Mike, you got anything on Tesla before we keep rolling? I'm guessing you don't. No, I can't say it's really a core holding of ours. I thought this was the number one holding of Strategic Night, sir. No, not this week. <laughs> not this week. There we go. <laughs> All right. But you know what it is out this week, though, are the numbers for last month for June. By the way, if you like Tesla, we're going to get more into Tesla a little bit in the old odd block. So just stay where you are. We got some interesting trades going up. Hint. 
those catastrophe puts, easy for me to say, those catastrophe puts still lighten it up, which is just crazy. Uh, but before we get to that, uh, what's been lighting it up for June? Apparently, uh, the options biz was lighting it up. The numbers came out from our friends over there at OCC, the options clearing corp for June. Overall contract volume at the OCC in June was 387 million contracts, a 2% increase from June of last year. A year to date, ADV over there is up about 2% as well, 17 point, about almost 17.2 million contracts. Uh, of course, they clear a lot of stuff over there, not just options, so drilling down a little bit further into options. Uh, the exchange listed options reached about 374 million contracts. That's a 2% increase from last year. Year to date, again, up only 1% on the options side. Uh, for this time last year, compared to this time last year, I should say. Uh, digging a little deeper, equity options in June up 4% from this time last year. Cleared ETF options volume up 14, excuse me, 14% decrease uh, from June of last year. So a little bit of, of a slap in the face over there out there in the ETF side. And if that wasn't enough for you, index options also taking it on the chin in June, down 16% from this time last year. Also interesting, we don't talk about the futures that they clear over there, uh, but uh, they, they uh, increased their futures volume 16% from this time last year. Why that's interesting to us, what does OCC clear on the futures side? Well, VIX futures, of course. So VIX futures also lighting it up out there in June. So a few bright spots, even if uh, ETFs and index options not among them. Any thoughts on those numbers before we keep on rolling into the odd block? Mr. Greasy, non-greasy meatball, Mr. Rock Lobster, or Uncle Mike? I, Options I love it, a bull market. They do. <laughs> Options oh, love he a stole market. it. He stole it. He I, stole it on I you, sir. beat him to the punch. <laughs> Plus, you know, you're just testing to see if I didn't have the mute on or not. I, yeah. I know that. I know that move. When you actually, you just casually ask for my opinion, even though you really don't want it. You're just, you're just testing. A bit of a test. test. Also buys me some time so I can do what we do right now, which is toss to our next segment, which is time for the odd block. It's time to break down the most interesting, unusual, and downright questionable options activity that's been identified by theoptionsinsider.com. It's time for the odd block. everybody welcome back to the odd block indeed the portion of the show where we break down some of the weirder paper that was lighting it up uh today in the old options market and gotta go right back to our old weird friend tesla to find a lot of weird stuff first off why do you guys keep hitting us up about these uh quote-unquote catastrophe puts these jan 2019 50 puts what's up with those are they still trading have they closed them out they're still there a lot of questions about those and so yes he answered all that is yes and yes uh, yes, they are still trading about 350. That's what I, that was as of a couple hours ago. Let's see if that, that total has increased. But uh, let's see really quickly if my platform will screw uh, 300 actually more 396 almost 400 hitting the tape today that brings the grand total on the open interest 28,373 so I added they've added more than a few thousand since we first spotted these nearly a month ago so these things continue to pile up someone continues to pick up these puts they're trading a buck 30 at a buck 35 right now uh, we've speculated in the past as to what the heck people are actually up to with these things why they're trading them but uh, either way, it's just uh, weird, weird stuff out there. I'll let you guys make your own conclusions why they're doing it. If, if that wasn't catastrophic enough for you, though, we were playing around with these today. We did notice <laughs> that's not enough. The 50 strike just isn't uh, far out enough for your bones there. We're too, not cheap enough for your blood. Well, then the Jan 2018 20 puts also kind of lighten it up. They continue to trade 117 hitting the tape yesterday on those bad boys a total of 10,613 open on that strike as well so about nearly 30,000 open of the Jan 2019 50 puts and 10,613 of the Jan 2018 20 puts and both of those still fairly active not a lot going up today on the 20 puts but yesterday over 100 going up there so crazy town kind of however you however you want to break it down Mr. Rock Lobster what are your thoughts here on these uh I think I think catastrophic is pretty much the only way you can describe these puts. The the fifties and even the twenties lighten it up these days. What's going on out there? <laughs> um, you look at them, and you know, it doesn't take much to actually double your money on puts like that. 
Um, just because if you get a little more pop and vol, you get another 20 point move, move, all of a sudden those puts that you know, everybody's paying a nickel for are worth, you know, maybe 15 or 20 cents, you know, cause vol goes up and people get a little more nervous and the skew kicks in and all of a sudden all that junk becomes worth something because all of a sudden you can sell the 250 puts for $2. Um, so stuff like that, uh, happens and, and, and you have to be honest, you know, you see a stock that's just kind of melting without a bid two days in a row and it's going to bring, it's going to bring the put buyers in and all that stuff's going to get real expensive real fast. Um, and it's hard, it's hard not to say, I don't think it gets to 200, but it's easy for that junk to, um, to make some money, uh, when you have back to back days like this, you have a third day like this and they'll probably be exiting for a pretty decent profit. Uh, you don't need to get anywhere near there. You just need the vault to go higher. Because um, right now, all those things are, you know, that's all big specky vol down there. Big specky vol. That's why I bring you on, sir, for, the, for those technical terms. Well, you say uh, drops bring out the put traders, put buyers, and sellers. And uh, we got certainly got more of that going on. Uh, we just, outside of the crazy catastrophe puts uh, in Tesla, there are also just some general, shall we say, super bearish puts lighting it up not quite catastrophe but i'm sure if you're a long holder it wouldn't exactly look too good on your sheets it was the july 200 puts uh that were lighting it up today another kind of these crazy strikes a total of 2266 uh going up today uh 1142 had traded about midway through the session uh, a lot of that in small lots uh including about 350 the biggest chunk we saw going up for a nickel and they prices ranged all the way up to 18 cents these puts were kind of all over the place today and again a total of about double that going up uh today open interest about 2500 uh which is kind of interesting uh, but, but that's not the whole story you might think oh someone's coming in to close uh actually we saw 737 of these trading yesterday as well for about four to five cents uh, so that wasn't all closing yesterday's paper uh, because the OI actually increasing by a couple of hundred contracts yesterday. So clearly, there's some back and forth on this strike. There's active trading on these July 200 puts. And in case you're wondering, yeah, these expire on the 21st. They have a whopping 15 days, just over two weeks uh, to expiration. Some people are playing fast and loose here on the 200 strike. We kind of did a little digging to see when did these bad boys actually open? When did people start playing on this 200 strike? And it was back... About almost exactly a month ago, June 8th, when paper came in. And it looks like they were pretty much hitting the bid on these to start, again, all small lot trading. Most of it, 100 contracts or less, uh, doing it in prices from $0.06 cents to $0.07 cents over the course of a day. So a lot of smattered small lots. Uh, we didn't see that big chunk. So the, it is potential there could be a newsletter out there maybe talking these things up, too. I haven't had a chance to really dig into that either. The small size is perhaps indicative of a newsletter, but we also see some of the larger execution getting done in small pieces as well these days to kind of uh, stay under the radar a, a little bit. You guys, I won't break down the chart for you. you guys probably know your Tesla chart by now. This thing's been pretty much a rocket to the moon except for the last week or so when it kind of uh, has trailed off a bit. It got as high, oh, 382 and change was, yeah, 386 actually, almost 387 as about a couple of weeks ago. And it's kind of since then, it's just been uh, clipped, shall we say, about almost a third. Uh, so not exactly good days out there in Tesla land and someone at least because there's so much back and forth on these people are actually buying them as well as they're selling them. So clearly some people drawing a line out here in the sand saying 200. I'm happy with that this far, no farther. And if it gets on there, I'll pick myself up some others saying, yeah, look out below. I'm going to load up on these bad boys. Uh, Mr. Rock Lobster, I know this strike isn't exactly your wheelhouse because you like to trade more like the 50s and the 20s. Uh, but that said, what are your thoughts here on just these continued funky strikes lighting it up out here in Tesla these days? Well, I, I'm just looking at the regular July volume. Um, you still, you know, I, th I think also, too, um, I think there was some put selling and um, people thought it was free money. And a lot of the, I'm, I swear, I'll bet you a lot of this is just covering, you know, where. Oh yeah, they're never going. This we're never getting down here. We're going to sell these for a buck or whatever. And all of a sudden, pfft, you know, everything kind of blows up. It would not surprise me to see a tremendous amount of put short covering here, um, very, very, very easily. Um, just because. Oh, it was three fifty. Now it's three hundred. Whoops. You know, it just that's. And you just don't want to get run over. Uh, 
you know, you know what that freight train is like. That's the no bueno freight train. And you just you, <laughs> you don't want to be run over by it. There is a lot of no bueno, no bueno freight train. That might be a good name for the show, too. Uh, I like it. All right, moving on. Yeah, no bueno. If you hit that strike, I think there's going to be a lot of no bueno people out there in Tesla land. Moving on to a, a smaller name for our final one. Uh, this is LG Display Company Limited. This is an ADR. A ticker symbol LPL. Closing today, $16.10, off about three quarters of a buck, nearly 5%. So... Not the best day for this name. This is the name that does about 200 contracts a day. Doing about 5,500 today, so a wee bit more, shall we say. And where did that action come from? Well, we saw a massive sweep, 5,001 to be precise, of the Jan 2018 15 puts. Paper just chasing these bad boys across all markets. Started lifting offers at a buck 20, chased them all the way up to about a buck 25 before they got done. Uh, to open interest on the strike, negligible, not much really going on out there at all. So a total, oh, actually, they added 10 more at the end, 5,011 to be precise here. Uh, this has all the hallmarks of a bit of a long equity holder saying, I'm going to pr protect myself a little bit here on the downside. This thing has popped of late, so maybe want to look in the lock in a little bit of gains too. This thing was trading about 12 bucks and change, oh, about two, a month and a half ago or so. And since then, it's been on a nice tier to the upside. So maybe a long equity holder saying, I like this bad boy, but if it does decide to drop, I'm um, keeping it from about, uh, actually about 1380 or so from where those break-evens are. Uh, Mr. Rock Lobster, your thoughts on these bad boys as well, sir? I just, I'm just, I look at all this stuff, and I'm, I just, it's hard to, people, uh, they still want it. There's no, there is no way around it. I, that's all I can say about that. There's just more, there is continue more interest in this stuff. There you go, sir. Well, in-depth analysis, as always, sir. At least you weren't muted. I like it. Well done. <laughs> you know where we can get in-depth analysis, though? It's Thursday. That means it's time for Uncle Mike to hold court. It's time for the strategy block. It's time to dispense options, wit, wisdom, and education. It's time for the strategy block. All right, everybody, it is Thursday. That means it's time for Uncle Mike to dispense options, wit, and wisdom, not necessarily in that order. Uncle Mike, what you got for us today, sir? We got wit, we got wisdom, we have intelligence, we have humor, we have all sorts of things for today. We also have irony. Uh, I bet we weren't expecting that for today. Uh, we actually, I want to go through... Uh, Silver. Silver has getting, been getting the royal tar kicked out of it lately, and I want to go through this. Uh, there's been two silver collars that I've had on. One of them's a little bit more aggressive. That's the one where I did the two-year out 1225 collar on SLV uh, put on in January. And uh, that was one where <clears throat> I figured that we would have uh, perhaps a few more adjustments on it, but uh, quite honestly, as soon as I put the collar on, uh, a lot of the volatility got sucked out of the two options that I had on. And so I kept the put on and just bought my way out of the call. And so right now we're just long stock, long put for that SLV collar. Uh, it's a little bit more aggressive and that one was planning on being more active with, but I have every bit of confidence that I'll be able to get back that 40 cents on SLV sometime between now and uh, uh, January of 2019. Now, the other trade that we did was just designed to be kind of a bond replacement. Uh, this was a while back, probably about six, seven months ago. SLV was at $18.16, I believe. Uh, that's a, a approximate, the price is an approximation. What we did was, is we bought the January of 2018, that's this coming January, 18 puts, and sold the 20 calls. Uh, we bought the 18 puts for $2.16, and we sold the 20 calls for $2 for a 16 cent debit. So the ultimate risk on that uh, is roughly 35 cents approximately, just because of the, or I'm sorry, it was 1830 is where we actually, is where SLV was when we got into it approximately. So the approximate risk on the trade is roughly 50 cents, uh, and the approximate gain potential is $1.50. And the risk, of course, is the 30 cents between 1830 and 18. Uh, and the debit we paid for the collar of 16 cents. Well, fast forward this, we've been doing stuff, so to speak, and going into this week uh, with silver getting hammered again, we bought back the short call for the second time now, and we were long SLV and long the 18 put for January. 
Now, in looking at this, what this actually did was, is if you combine all the debits and all of everything because of the stuff that we did for doing stuff, um, I've heard that somewhere before. I always keep forgetting where, though, but uh, he'd probably say something, but I think he's muted anyway. But anyway, uh, from doing stuff of getting I'm in and getting out. listening quietly. Of, there you go. There you go. Uh, from doing stuff, uh, what we were in which we talked about in past strategy blocks, what we've been able to do is get roughly the same trade, the same risk, but with unlimited potential upside. And I think we had to pay an additional two pennies worth of debit from doing stuff. And uh, that's pretty exciting to me to get to the point to where you're getting rid of all of your upside hindrance of the covered call. Uh, and it only costs you roughly two pennies from getting in, getting out and doing that type of thing. That's exciting to me. Now, with that being said, though, we wanted to take this to the next level a little bit. Uh, upon doing the analysis of the 18 put for January, uh, that's pretty far in the money. Uh, it's $3 in the money on a $15 underlying. Uh, you really don't need to be that far in the money. Now, we got that far in the money when silver dropped a while ago as well, but we just couldn't get filled or we couldn't get the price that we wanted to get filled on doing a roll on it. This time we did. So what we were able to do is we went out to uh, September of this year. So we, I shouldn't say went out, we went in to September of this year. And I was looking around trying to find a way with which we can get $3 off the table. Cause this $3 that we have at risk in this long put, we actually have, uh, I know it's technically kind of like a wash, meaning as the underlying goes up, the put value goes down and vice versa. But how would we like to have that same privilege, but have that $3 in our pocket as opposed to being tied up in a put option? Well, what we were able to do is we looked at the uh, $16.50 put for September. Now, both of them had roughly 10 cents of time value in them. Uh, the delta was almost identical in the in the long puts. I think it was roughly a difference between an 86 delta and an 83 delta, something very minor. So we decided to roll it. Now, why did we decide to go there? Well, number one, I want to get to the point to where if silver does bounce back um, and it is going up to, say, the 17 level, the 18 level, I kind of like the idea of being profitable when the underlying goes down when you initially get into the position. That's exciting to me. That's something that I do cartwheels over. That's something that I give high fives to people over. And if you don't do stuff, if we just hang on to that deep, 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 and it's not just a deep in the money put, it's a deep in the money put with a very deep voice I used there. Uh, by hanging on to that, we have no possibility of getting any profit until SLV is back up into the 18s again. But by doing this, we'll be profitable if SLV touches 17 again. I believe seven, I think 1698 is why I calculate as the, the guaranteed profit point on this trade. And we didn't buy any more time value. Now, here's the disadvantage of this trade is that we took away uh, a few months of the lifespan of the put. But the put that we were in was so far in the money, it was basically at a point to where it really wasn't, it was borderline short stock because of the fact of how far it was in the money. But by rolling to something that's not quite as far in the money, has the same amount of time decay that gives us the potential to actually start making money sooner on a pretty safe trade in the first place. Now, let's say that silver does continue to get pummeled, and then come September, SLV is at uh, $2 a share. Well, we're going to be in about the same spot that we would have been had we done the original trade. But let's say that SLV just goes through the roof. Let's say it goes back up to 20 and let's assume that I don't do anything on the way up. I probably would, but let's just assume for a second uh, that I did not. What that does is that gives us roughly an extra dollar fifty of profit on the way up. So that's an example of how you can create a better risk reward for yourself on a trade that was pretty good risk reward to begin with without taking on that much additional risk. I like the idea of actually just giving up some time for the potential to get another dollar fifty in profit on a roll on a trade that has extremely limited downside risk to begin with. And that is the strategy block for today. I had to step away for a second, Uncle Mike, to uh, deal with some stuff here in the studio. But did, do my ears deceive me? Did I hear you actually making an adjustment on your SLV collar or am I completely crazy?
you're you're only slightly crazy because I have the two SLV collars. The one that I was anticipating having lots of adjustments on, no. But the one that I was anticipating not having hardly any adjustments on, yes. It's like the second one I've talked about. <laughs> <laughs> well, there you go. All right. So we got something. We're getting a, some bang for our buck uh, here in the SLV collar. I know it's been performing well for you, which is what your clients care about. For us here on the show, we want we like a little meat on the content bones too, and the the lack of adjustments has been somewhat of a disappointment, given all the fanfare that we had to announce the epic two-year collar on SLV. We know Silver's actually been doing a little bit of stuff of late, so maybe if, if now now is the time to perhaps finally do something. Hope you enjoy that, all you Silver buffs out there, you will, werewolf hunters out there. We got a little bit of time, so it's time for you guys uh, to take the purse strings, take the mail block strings, call it what you will. A lot of you guys have thoughts on aprons. I guess we'll get to those now. It's time for the mail block. It's time to take your seat on the all-star panel as we read your emails, tweets, Facebook messages, website comments, and much more. It's time for The Mail Block. All right, everybody. Like the man said, this is the portion of the show where uh, you guys take the reins. Questions, comments, insights, pearls of wisdom, all that good stuff. Uh, You know how to hit us up. The Options Insider on the website. A lot of you guys like to use the feedback form. You can certainly do so as well. You can also hit us up the old-fashioned way. Questions at theoptionsinsider.com. If you can, join us live every Monday and Thursday. Hit us up via the chat as well. And, of course, a lot of you like to reach out via social media, ad options, Twitter, and stock twits, Options Insider on Facebook. And I'm sure there's a few other platforms we're floating around out there as well that you can hit us up on as well if you are so inclined. All right. Uh, let's kick things off. We asked you guys a lot of questions in the segment, too. We recently asked you guys, oh, what was it, about a week or so ago, maybe two, we asked you, where do you guys stand on all the craziness in Bitcoin? And I got the actual numbers for you here. Uh, I knew it was. A lot of people wanted out, but actually a lot of people want Bitcoin options. 41% wanted Bitcoin options after all that time. It was 19% saying it was too volatile. 9% saying you're still bullish, and 31% saying you're sick to death of Bitcoin. Well, don't worry. I got you covered. We're not going to talk about it, at least for another few minutes. Uh, that's actually more for Twifo. Anyway, you guys like to hit us up on Twifo with the Bitcoin questions for some reason. Okay, we'll take it. Uh, we asked you also last week an interesting one, kind of surprising results. I can pay it off for you here now, finally, due to the long holiday weekend. At least I'd like to give it to you on Monday, but we couldn't get to it then, obviously. Uh, we asked you last week, let's get back to some basics. Uh, what's your favorite way to use options to get long, a.k.a. bullish exposure? to an underlying stock or a future. And uh, we gave you the choices of a long call or call spread, short put or put spread, uh, a stock slash future replacement, so effectively the underlying replacement, and then a good old bullish risk reversal, one of my own personal favorites. And I thought for sure short put slash put spread would take it or at least be a very, very strong contender. And it was, but nowhere near as strong as I thought. 56% Uncle Mike and Rock Lobster, 56% choosing the long call slash call spread. Does that surprise you? Only 22% hitting the puts. Not at all. I think it's a great idea. I think that if you want to be long, be long. I, 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 I agree. Um, I say long call or call spread with the vol low. It's just just buy the calls. I mean, you're, you're selling puts really if you want to own the stock lower to me. That's, you're selling the stock. You want a little juice, whatever. You just But you really don't want to be aggressively long. I'm sorry, but that's... That's what it is. That's what the that's what the positions are dying, di- designed for, and I'm and I'm sticking with it. Oh, throwing some shade on all the put sellers out there. Only, only 22 percent of our listeners, according to this, will be angry with you. So it's okay. <laughs> it's okay even, sell- even mind, I sold puts today, so maybe there I should. Go. <laughs> there you it's go. okay to sell puts, but you don't sell puts to get crazy long. That's the thing. Right. You so sell puts to get agree. baby long. What if you sell five x though? There you go. That's how you get crazy long. <laughs> See, you're just not you're not, not doing enough. That's what it is. You like to do stuff. You just don't do enough stuff. Uh, I'm just teasing <laughs> that's listeners. Why not just sell the naked short straddle? Have some fun with it. Yeah, we should we should put that on our next. Uh, There's our no next additional <laughs> margin requirement. You'd be a fool not to do that. <laughs> What's right? your, that should be our next question. What's your favorite way to go crazy? And uh, we'll put a bunch of things. That's not a bad idea, actually. Eight uh, percent saying this underlying replacement. And only 14% from my baby, the short, uh, excuse me, the bullish risk reversal. Interesting stuff. Getting to this week, you guys are lighting it up. Clearly, you guys got some thoughts on Apron. And uh, I asked you guys, so we had, they asked you guys this, I think it was yesterday they put this out. So you got a couple of days left. Um, Blue Apron, not having a good week, down over 10% from its IPO price. Obviously, there's no options trading on it right now, but assuming, assuming options were listed on it. 
which of the following trades would you like to make? And we gave her the options. We got all the way out to the end of the year. We figured not play around with weeklies or months. Let's go all the way out to the end of 2017. So let's go to Dece. Uh, we gave her a few options. We said, hey, you want to buy that Dece 10 call? Let's say it's, it's for a buck. In our proverbial example, it's just for a buck. Uh, do you want to buy that Dece 9 put? The stock was trading right around 880, 890, right around nine bucks uh, when we wrote this up. So that put had a little bit of juice on it. Buy that for a buck too. Nice deal. Uh, sell that Dece 10 call for a buck, or you're just not going anywhere near apron. Uh, Mr. Rock Lobster, I'm sure some of your, uh, your crazies in the chat room salivating at the opportunity to get their hands on apron. Not quite yet, but uh, what are your thoughts here? What would your, what would your vote be, and what do you think our listeners are? And they're, they're piling into this one. What do you think they're voting for? Um, I think a lot of our listeners were more, uh, they'd rather order the food from apron than buy the stock. It certainly um, seems that way. <laughs> um, you know, it, 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 it just smells like that Etsy stock. I know it's like not the same business, you know, Etsy's some crafty, whatever thing. I think the apron is kind of a good idea. I, I just, it's, it's one of those businesses that could, it could be so hugely competitive so fast. Um, I, at least me, I'm thinking, you know, you buy a 10 put, something like that, um, or a nine put. I think that's, that sounds fine to me. Um, that would be, that's where I would spend my money on this thing. But um, what is everybody else saying? I think, um, I have to say, I am, I'm feeling that they're going to just not want to touch apron. But if anything, I buy, I think I buy the nine put. Interesting. Mr. Uncle Mike, I know this is the core holding now this IPO to be a strategic night portfolio, about 60 to 70 percent, I would say. Uh, what is your call? What do you think our listeners are doing? <laughs> I don't touch things that go down 10 percent. So I guess if I would say so for me, it's a not touch. That one's pretty easy. But I will go with uh, the listeners want to buy the 10 call. They're bullish. Let's get into this. Yeah, they were feeling some bullish love last week. I was kind of thinking, given the price action of late, the nine put would be the leader and uh it, or the sarcastic not want to touch it and it seems like our listeners got a little sarcasm in them today they got 48 percent, almost half saying they're not going anywhere near this thing they're on the rock lobster train 26 percent coming in though for my nine puts so that's got a little love there only 17 percent for two saws uh, upside love there the 10 call and only nine percent wanting to sell that call i get that a little naked risk for a buck that's uh, not that attractive we put it in there well we got to have if we don't put one, at least one, quote unquote, premium harvesting uh, option in there, people get upset at us. So we got to make sure we got something for the dark side folks uh, out there. All right. We got, uh, let's see what else we got here. We got a bunch. What can we squeeze in in the time remaining? Uh, we had someone write in last week. We didn't get a chance to get to it, unfortunately. Uh, Sal06, he wanted to know, hey, is the Apple 147 call for June 30th a good idea? I'm going to go out on a limb and say no. Uh, because the stock is at 142.73. <laughs> so there we go. Timely results from us here on the old. Uh, the, uh, you know, that's what happens. We're, we're busy. We get a lot of questions here. Sometimes they don't make it all to the top in time here. You know, uh, we try to get them. Like the live ones when he put it in, we got Pete Biggers coming in on the live chat saying, going back, I think, to those Tesla puts saying, tomorrow may be a good time to sell those puts. Uh, maybe we'll see. They certainly got some juice on them, and if there is back and forth, there clearly are long holders. Though they're buying them for like three to five cents. I don't know if they're looking uh, to scalp a penny as much as they are maybe trying to get some catastrophe action. But then again, these things only have two weeks to go, so I don't know how much more action you can get on these things. Is this thing really going to get clipped completely, almost in half, in another two weeks? Someone out there is clearly saying yes because they're putting their money where their mouth is. A whole three to I think it was eighteen cents on those bad boys. Um, let's see here. Let's do one more here. Uh, we got so many assignment questions. Uh, Mr. Rocklops, you just confused everybody with your own confusion on the spread stuff. This one comes from Nelly. Nelly 2. Not Nelly 1, but Nelly 2. Uh, he or she saying, just so I'm clear on the spread assignment thing, if I'm in SPX, then I just get cash if the index closes inside my spread. But if I'm, a, I'm in a stock... Then I get the stock. This goes back, Mr. Rock Lobster and Uncle Mike. This was kind of that question we had a few weeks ago uh, that, blew Uncle, that blew the Rock Lobster's mind about what happens when a spread settles between your strikes. What, what happens? It's crazy. And we kind of broke it down for people, the two different scenarios. SPX, obviously, a cash settled versus most of your equity options would settle into the stock, the underlying. Uh, Mr. Rocklops, I know you were confused then. I think you got it sorted out in your brain now. I think you can handle walking Mr. Nelly through what happens in those two uh, scenarios. Nelly 2, I should not Nelly 1, Nelly 2. Uh, 
Talk about stress. Talk about stress. So in general, so for calls, you take where the spot price, your settlement price is, and you subtract it from the uh, your strike price. So if your call's in the money, that's going to be the cash you get. Um, if it's stock, you're going to uh, – your long call will be exercise the stock. Um, if you're in the money and it's going to cost you – the strike plus whatever premium that is. Um, so if you spent less for the call premium, you'll make a little money. Uh, and if you spend more for the call premium, you're going to lose money. So uh, that's how it is. And all the stuff on the, if your stock or index expires in between the strikes, all the stuff you're short above, that all goes away and, you know, goes to zero. So I think I got that spread thing figured out now. That was a quality moment. We should put that, when we make our best stuff, we should put that in our best stuff, where I tossed it to you on that, and we got silence for a good minute, a minute and a well, half. Well, you know what's funny is we're all going to remember that on December 30th. If there is such a, a thing as deer in the headlights when it comes to audio, that was it. It was, it was quality stuff, good business. Good questions there, Mr. or perhaps Mrs. Nelly, uh, to other people asking similar questions, Darkane and others. Uh, good stuff. we got to keep on rolling, though. It's time for our final segment. It's time for Around the Block. It's time to tell you what we'll be watching on our trading screens until the next episode. It's time for Around the Block. All right, as you mentioned at the top of the show, a lot of people watching all kinds of craziness coming out of North Korea. What did Trump tweet? Doesn't Can't this guy get a life or something along those lines? All he does is shoot missiles. Doesn't he have a life? Something, does he have something better to do? Something along those lines. So good to see we have the sarcasm coming out of uh, the administration. I think I also our ambassador to the UN uh, saying something along the lines of, I'm missing my fourth because of all these meetings about, about uh, North Korea. The hashtag thanks North Korea or something like that. So a lot of sarcasm coming out of the administration over this craziness. But also, as we can see from uh, ye old Vix, a little bit of concern creeping into the old markets today as well, as is probably warranted when you got a madman with his finger on the button. That said, Mr. Uncle Mike, maybe we'll start with you. I know you're looking at all your myriad legion of adjustments out there in silver, also looking to get in on some of those uh, catastrophe puts in Tesla. Aside from that, uh, what's catching your eye out here for the rest of the week into the weekend? Well, I, 2,400 again, uh, I, I think 2,400 is a pretty key level in the S&P, not only for uh, being a key number, but also uh, from a charting standpoint, I think it's a pretty key number as well if you look at it. Uh, the other thing, we do have non-farm payrolls tomorrow. Uh, we'll see if it's uh, something big or a resounding meh, or maybe it's something to where it's exciting and maybe that's where the buyers will come in. I don't know, but I do know that as per, as per every Friday, non-farm Friday, I'm always got my eyeballs glued to my phone if I'm at the gym or my eyeballs glued to the screen or the TV if I'm at home, uh, waiting to see what those numbers are going to be in pure excitement. Pure, pure hardcore excitement for non-farms. Non-farms has a nice correlation to the Fed. Now that the Fed seems to have punted, I think, most of the indicators showing less than a 20% probability of, of near-term raises. Uh, it seems like I'm guessing non-farms going to be a little bit on the back burner tomorrow, but you never know. A crazy number, either way, good or bad, could change that whole calculus. So uh, non-farms, uh, always an interesting one to watch, if perhaps not the market mover that it has been uh, a few years ago, shall we say. And it was even not that long ago, six to eight months ago, we're starting to move markets again. Let's see if it's settled out or if it's got a little bit of teeth left in it, like our friends over there in North Korea. Mr. Rock Lobster, as you settle, before you settle into your bunker up there, because uh, you know you're in that target-rich environment of Maine up there, uh, what, what are you watching the rest of the week into the weekend? Um, I want to see if we get any kind of real bounce, because, you know, the market, we have been kind of pulling back from those highs, right? Uh, mostly, you know, the market likes, it lives on good news, and it lives on earnings and things like that, and um it's middle of the summer. There hasn't been really great news. Um, not really much out of the administration as far as new stuff. Uh, apparently, the Russia thing seems to just have gone away, kind of. I'm not quite sure anymore. I'm, I've been, there aren't those headlines to watch anymore. Um, so there, there, that isn't, hasn't been driving any spikes. So now, you know, of course, the North Korea is doing whatever they're doing. Um, I just it's these kind of stuff. There's not really any good positive economic news. Then all of a sudden you get, you know, a little hit of this and a little hit of that. And 
a couple of bad, you know, a couple of tweets and whatever. And things just kind of, I think, settle. And I, I, you know, I think you're below 2,400 or, you know, you get into the high 2,300s for SPX. It still feels like a little bit of a, a little short-term buying opportunity. Um, but the non-farm payroll number was okay. It just wasn't great. And, um, and I think a big part of that is if you're, if you're a bull and you like the, you know, the economic agenda, that's part of what was driving, I think, the market higher. We're not, I think a lot of that agenda is just being stalled for whatever reason. So uh, this is not happening. So there's a lot of, okay, I want to see it happen, but there's not a lot of actually seeing it happen. Um, and I think short term, the biggest thing I know it might've been is the EU slapped that fine on Google um, last week. Uh, Google was about a thousand bucks and traded as low as 920. Google all that is. Um, I can't call it alphabet cause it's just, I just hate that name. It's so dumb. Um, but I think that's another part of it. Uh, that puts a ceiling on big tech, and any time that happens, it's usually not good for those runs in those indexes. Good old government regulation. Good for putting a ceiling on things. I think it sounds like the North Koreans are already getting at you, sir. They're already launching a massive cyber attack uh, at you up there in Maine. So before you get to the bunker, you better close out this show. But before we go, one last time around the horn. Uh, let's start with you, Mr. Roth, lastly, before the North Koreans wipe you off the map completely. If, if you're capable of responding, we shall see. <laughs> um, what's cooking in the land of the pit, sir? Oh, oh, oh no, they oh got my him. Gosh. Uncle Mike, I, they I, got I, him. It's too late the pit, for the Rock wow. Lobster. He's gone. You got us? Oh, you're, you survived <laughs> the initial barrage. Okay, good. I was concerned about you. I, uh, anyway... Uh, we don't really have, we have another Saturday class coming up in a couple weeks. We haven't decided on what it's going to be. Uh, we're in our income generating master class right now. And just come on over to the option pit and, you know, learn how to trade options. We do it differently than everybody else because uh, we do it in a risk control fashion. So if that appeals to you, if you want to learn how to understand trade options, uh, that's what we do. And I do individual mentoring with people. That's mostly what I do now because uh, that's what I like to do. And there you go. There you go. Our thoughts and prayers are with the Rock Lobster as he hopefully survives this massive cyber attack from North Korea. Let's, let's see if you can, if you're safe over there in the hinterland, Mr. Uncle Mike. What's cooking in all things RCM Wealth Advisor besides the North Korea attack? Besides that, we we have the attack that we've initiated on ticket charges. If you're sick of paying those, uh, we have relationships with various brokers, TD Ameritrade, Interactive Brokers, as well as Trading Slash Money Block, uh, to where if you trade under our umbrella, you can pay 35 cents a contract with no ticket charge. Now, of course, there's some fees that apply, uh, but most of the time it comes out to be a better deal than what you might be getting. Uh, with that being said, uh, if you're interested in that, call me. But if you want to sign up now, we are offering a special in that all those wonderful mentoring sessions that the Rock Lobster is doing or anything at Option Pit, even if you want to buy, a t buy just a, a bunch of T-shirts from them, we'll throw in a $100 gift card for the Option Pit. If you are interested, call me at 312-212-3531 or shoot me an email at mtosaw at rcmfs.com. Like what you did there, the assault on ticket charges. Well done, sir. It's like you've done this radio thing once or twice before. Well done. Hit the man up over there, m 2 RCMFS. If you, too, want to carry out the assault on ticket charges as well as stick it to those folks at the option pit. Say, I'll take your services, but I'll take it for free, courtesy of an Uncle Mike gift card. Take advantage of all that. Hit him up and have a good time. Let him roll or perhaps not roll your silver collars for you as well. And on behalf of Uncle Mike and the Rock Lobster and indeed myself, I want to thank all of you out there in the listening audience for downloading, streaming, subscribing, tuning in live, sending in questions, all the fun stuff you guys do. We love you all, and we'll see you next week for more of The Option.
The preceding program was a production of the Options Insider Radio Network. For more quality options programs, visit www.theoptionsinsider.com or search for Options Insider Radio Network in your podcast provider of choice. Listeners can also access all of our programming through our mobile app, available in iTunes and on Google Play. Don't forget to follow along with your favorite programs and submit your own questions for the hosts at twitter.com slash options, facebook.com slash the options insider, or via questions at the options insider.com.